today I'm going to be showing you how I sculpt on my non-dominant hand. I'm going to be doing an ombre and an encapsulation with 136 from Radial Lights. And I'm going to be ombreing with uh, 103, which is a really pretty lilac color. Very, very light. And then I'm going to be using Prettiest Pink. Uh, which is one of the OG cover powders from Valentino. I haven't used it in so long because I've been using the new collection from them. But today I was like, let's bring out... Let's bring out an oldie but a goodie. You know what I mean? So I'm going to start with a bead of crystal clear as my base. Um... And I'm going to be doing a very, very thin base, placing the bead where the free edge would start. And I'm going to be dragging the product down into the shape that I want, which is obviously stiletto, per usual. I'm using a very light touch with my rose gold acrylic brush from Valentino. I believe this one is a size 10. Since I do my nails so long, sometimes I have to go in with the second bead. And since it is my non-dominant hand, I am definitely a little more messy while I work. Um, so, you know, bear with me. Okay, so once I'm done with that clear base, I like to squeeze the bottom of my form here a little bit, down here just to reinforce the curve so underneath it'll be really curvy that's just how I like it obviously you can skip that step if you don't want it like that that's just how I do it okay so now I'm going to go in with a bead of 103 and I'm going to place it like halfway down from like I'm placing it in the middle of my free edge and this part you're gonna need to work a little quickly on because you just don't want the acrylic to dry too fast so I'm dragging it down using that clear base as my guide to where the product is going to go cleaning up the edges here a little bit And with this bead, I am going to feather the product up so that way there's not a harsh line. So right now I'm using a very wet brush to do this part so that way the product feathers up nicely. This will help um, once we put the prettiest pink on, it's just going to help it blend really nicely. right here just because I see a little lump it's not very smooth 
and with stilettos, honestly, from experience, it does not hurt <laughs> adding a little bit of reinforcement to the nail at the very end, just because at the tip here, they're very, they can be very fragile. You can break the tip off really easily, so I like to make sure it has a good good amount of product at the end so it doesn't break. Alright, so now we're going to go in with the prettiest pink and we're going to place it right here, right where that fade starts is where we're going to place the bead of prettiest pink. And again, we're going to use the same technique using a wet brush. We're going to feather the prettiest pink down, down and down and down. And since these two colors are, um, they're both light colors, so it's gonna, it's a, it's a good combination for an ombre. It's almost a no-fail ombre because. Uh, since they're both pretty light, they're going to blend into each other really, really nicely. Ombres start getting a little hard when you start ombreing with darker colors. Um, so if you're a beginner at ombres, I suggest practicing with lighter colors and then start moving into darker colors once you get the hang of the technique down. have the ombre and you're happy with it I like to clear cap it um, just so that way when I go in and file my ombre stays perfect so I'm gonna take a bead of clear and place it right where the fade um, begins <laughs> begins or ends I don't know but right where the fade is happening, if that makes sense. move on to the next nail I like to put my forms on as I am working I know some people they put their forms on all at once but I don't know I just like to do it as I'm working just because I I don't want them to move or get messed up or anything that's personal preference also, so whatever suits you best, do that. All right, so again, we're gonna start with a very thin, clear base. And this finger, I am going to be doing the radial lights, 136. I think, I think that's what, I think it will look cute. I think the glitter will match. We're just gonna go for it because that's what I have out. And I am like master at winging it, so that's what we're doing.
Okay, again, I'm going to pinch underneath here. Just gonna give it that really nice curve underneath it. And then we're gonna go in with my radial lights. I love the radial lights collection. It's so beautiful. It's just like chunks and shards of glitter and clear acrylic. And it just gives the nail a really beautiful look. I feel like the radial lights collection doesn't get enough clout. If you like the Radio Lights collection, comment down below and give it some love. You can't really tell right now, I feel like on the camera, but once we're all done, I will show you. I will show you what it looks like. Do you guys ever just get like too excited and just get a really big bead and you're like, whoa, too much. I didn't mean to grab that much. Shit, you guys, I don't know if this is gonna, how cute this is gonna look with the lilac color. <sighs> it's okay, it's already happening. Once we're done, we are going to clear cap the nail um, so that way when you go into file and shape, it doesn't file out the beautiful glitter. There you go. Okay, you guys, so I am going to finish the rest of my nails. And repeat the same process.
Alright you guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.